Hi guys, Richard Marcus here, and I wanted to put together a quick tutorial on how to deal specifically with Halo effects. And if you're like me and you've done any kind of work with filters, sharpening, different techniques like that, what I think you're going to find is that a lot of times you will get these kind of effects similar to this or around trees. Anytime you're dealing with filters, anytime you're dealing with sharpening images, you typically have the potential of getting these kind of halo effects and that's kind of what I wanted to talk about a little bit today because there is a very easy way of dealing with it and you know I see a lot of uh, photographers today putting up work and leaving these effects in their image. So real quick, we're going to jump into it right now, and I just wanted to show you a quick and effective way of dealing with it. We'll, we'll start out down here, which is kind of an easy way. The first thing I want to do is I want to hit my Alt key on my Mac and stamp visible. So we're going to stamp down everything, start out with a fresh layer, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change the blending mode here to darken. What I want to do is I want to take all these light lines and match them to the adjacent colors right here. Easiest way of doing that, grab the clone stamp tool and what you're going to do, keep your opacity at at a hundred percent, your flow up there at a hundred percent and for this small area I'm going to make my sampling uh, area right, right, pretty small, right next to it and you're going to see I'm going to just kind of resample, go over these areas, and as you can see, you can totally eliminate these halo effects. Now, once we get to larger areas like this, obviously I'm going to increase my clone sampling size, and if I take an area that's to the right adjacent to the area that I want to take care of right in here. Um, what I'm going to do is I will sample here. And as you can see, resample, go far enough away, and you'll see here I can kind of take care of all these areas in one shot. If I don't like it, don't be afraid back out and handle it that way and I think what you're going to see there is quite a big difference right here in just these areas so just giving you a really quick rough idea of what you can do obviously anytime you're dealing in here here in the lighthouse in between these cables you're going to have quite a bit in effect resample and one of the things you want to do is, obviously we want to stay out of trees and areas like that that we're going to be sampling from. So resampling down here kind of becomes an important part of the process. We just want to make sure that we stay out of those areas. And here you can see from left to right, clear difference. You know, I'm going to go over here, just a couple of other quick areas just to show you um, how you can do this. Um, And uh, I guess we can sample right here. If it's too light, sample from a closer area. Match it up. So very easy way of doing this. Really easy, especially when you're taking areas like you're sampling from clouds or the sky. Not much to it. You can very easily get rid of these areas Take a moment. Went a little too far there. Take a moment. Go go through your images. I'm just kind of sampling, giving you guys a rough idea how easy it is to do this. And just get rid of some of these halos. If 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 you want to make your your photos, give them really that professional touch. 
take the time to make them look the way you want them to look, this is the way to do it. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. I know that there are different tutorials up on YouTube, different different websites on how to do this, but um, I think you'll find this is a very easy way of getting rid of some of those halos and giving a real professional look to your to your images. Um, got this right side here bugging me a little bit, so we'll go ahead and match it up. We'll just sample an area here, resample so we don't wind up in those trees. <clears throat> and there you have it. So, real quick, guys, tutorial on how to deal with halo effects that you may get from using different filters, from sharpening your image. And um, I think you'll find that, you know, it's, it's not only easy, but an effective way of making your images look so much better. So, um, I'm using a Wacom tablet. I don't know if you guys are familiar with them, use Wacom. If you don't, um, there's some really, really good in, in, uh, tutorials, excuse me, on setting them up. Uh, Flurn.com, P-H-L-E-R-A-R-N, Flurn.com, uh, Aaron Nace, has some wonderful, wonderful tutorials on uh, setting up a Wacom, uh, as well as Photoshop, some amazing Photoshop techniques he does over there. So um, that's an amazing resource to use. Uh, you know, take some time. I think it's well worth the effort to make the change and just handle some of these halo effects. Um, anyway guys, if you liked my video, um, you know, comment below. It's it's my first video, so uh, don't be too harsh. Go easy on me. But uh, I really appreciate you sticking around, taking a look at it. As you can see, Here's the, fit, uh, the finished photo, dealt with the noise a little bit. I know you guys probably saw quite a bit of noise in that first image, so we had to deal with some of the noise and the halo effects. Uh, and, and I think, in the end, the quality of your work will probably improve dramatically just because you take the time to do those little extra things, polish your images off. So thanks for sticking with me, guys. Um, hopefully we'll have more tutorials up soon. Um, and I appreciate you taking the time to watch.